Hello everyone and welcome to another Bloomberg Terminal video. This is, uh, I believe, my sixth video on the Bloomberg Terminal and um, today we're going to be taking a look at maps inside the Bloomberg Professional Service. Now maps is something I touched upon, I believe, in my first or second video, um, but I felt it was deserving of its own video because of how powerful uh, the overlay data is in maps. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see what's available to us. Uh, before we actually get into a custom map, we are going to go to the maps function, which will take us to uh, geographical insights. And it's sort of a maps library. It kind of gives you an overview of different types of things you can do with the maps in Bloomberg Professional. Now you can see that there's uh, an assortment of, of sample maps here. And um, for instance, uh, let's take a look and see Gulf of Mexico oil platforms, or maybe you're interested in seeing the placement of factories or a certain type of stores uh, or a certain uh, brand of stores, I guess you could say, the Kroger family uh, as an example. Uh, I could take a look at things like uh, natural gas pipelines. Uh, so if you're lost in the Bloomberg terminal and you're looking for ideas on different types of data you can put up in in, um, in, in the maps, then this is a pretty um, good place to start. And this one's quite interesting as well, the Chinese Silk Road. Now, uh, you'll also see here in the top left, there is a list of data sets available, 390. And I'll show you all types of data that you can um, import into your maps. So let's go ahead and, and build a custom map, and we'll see what some of the overlays are. Uh, let me get rid of this news uh, scrolling feed at the bottom just to give us some more screen real estate. And uh, now we can go to Map, which is the custom map. And you'll be started off here with a uh, blank world map. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start showing you different uh, layers. So <clears throat> uh, the, the featured map that they have going on right now is the coronavirus outbreak. It's exactly as you think it is. It just shows you um, the amount of cases from lower to higher on that spectrum. And uh, if you want, you can um, take a look at uh, cases, recovered deaths from the global mainland China and United States regions. And this will show you on a state-by-state -state basis. Pretty self-explanatory. We're going to go ahead and remove that from our map here. Let's go ahead and start looking at the world equity markets. And this will just show you plainly on a map which markets are up and which are down. You can see that the S&P is up uh, 1.64% today and um, uh, all Chinese markets are up and uh, when you see that arrow there basically signifies the uh, markets are really up upwards of 2% in those regions. Let's go ahead and remove this layer and look at some other stuff. Uh, let's uh, pull up factories here and when we pull this category up you'll see that we're presented with um, four different categories of factories. We have administration, distribution, manufacturing, and research and development. And this takes um, a bunch of data into account to show you all sorts of factories that exist in the, uh, in the world. Now, it does take a few seconds to render all the data points here, but if you hover over them, uh, it, it should provide you with some additional information, such as the company see if I can do that. Summit Materials, Regal Beloit Corporation, etc. So that's pretty self-explanatory. And you have some filtering options available here. So you can set it from uh, or set it to any one of those four categories. You can see that all four are selected in this case. And we can narrow it down by region. Pretty self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and clean up the map here. And by the way, I forgot to mention that um, you have different base map layers as well. So I have mine set to hybrid, which I believe is the same thing as dark. Oh, no, it isn't. Uh, it goes dark to satellite. So when you zoom in close enough, it'll, it'll go to satellite imagery. Sorry about that. But you can change it so that the entire map is dark, or you can do a, a standard satellite map, a street map, or a traffic map, which is kind of like what you'd find on <coughs> Google or Apple Maps, for example. For the purposes of this video, we'll set it back to hybrid since that is default. Now let's look at our next category, which is retail. 
Now, <clears throat> you can see up here we have a number of categories we can look at. Supermarkets, uh, restaurants, general merchandising stores, discount stores, apparel stores. So let's see, let's uh, pretend that I'm uh, doing some sort of study in the state of Kansas and I'd, I'd like to see all of the uh, grocery stores that are um, uh, in the uh, in the Kansas area. Well, we'll just check off supermarkets here, and you'll see not a whole lot of data points here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and assume that uh, this is not all grocery stores. Um, these are, I guess, supermarkets, but I'm going to get, go ahead and assume that there are more than uh, that many supermarkets in the state of Kansas. That probably wasn't the best example, but um, no matter. Let's take a look at to different categories here. Discount stores. Uh, let's also check off restaurants and uh, apparel stores. And you, you can see how the data points are sort of populating in there. So um, good information to have um, if you're doing an analysis of the uh, retail sector in a specific region. Let's go ahead, and go ahead and get rid of that. And our next category is banking. So just two data sets here. Uh, first is the um, Federal Reserve Districts. And um, you can see the different districts here. For instance, the Boston District and uh, uh, San Francisco, District Number 12. And uh, that's pretty simple. Let's take a look at bank branches. And interestingly enough, uh, kind of let this render in here. Branch deposit amount. So if you um, hover over, you'll get some data on that. And I haven't looked at a lot of these to be to be honest, which is uh, you know not surprising. I don't spend a whole lot of time in maps here. There are some things I do look at, but I, I don't spend a lot of time in here. But I do think it's worth looking at nonetheless. Okay, now. Um, agricultural prices, uh, let's see, canola, it's various inputs here. This one's not really that interesting to me, to be honest. Um, I think once you start getting into commodities, I think it's actually really interesting. So if we pull up oil, you'll see um, refineries, for example. Well, let's take a look at different refineries here in the United States. So in, in Texas, which is... Um, stay with a lot of refineries you can see <clears throat> there's two different shades which are operational for a lighter orange I guess that's an orange color uh, and a darker for a refinery outage a new unit or an upgrade unit see that one's owned by Valero and so forth let's take a look at diesel racks So you can see where this is going. Now let's take a look at uh, uh, pipelines. So crude oil pipeline, for, inst for instance. And actually draw on the map different uh, pipelines and you can see just how many exist. Let's see if it renders if I zoom out. And again, we have a few different categories as well, from active to idle, to proposed, under construction, and terminated. So that's a view of different pipelines. Let's see if that shows you um, data in other continents here. I don't think it does. No matter. Uh, let's take a look at uh, petrochemical pipelines.
and let's say that I'm interested in looking at oil platforms. Where you go, you've got a bunch here in the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, again, looks like a majority of them are operational, and you can hover over to get some more information. Power. Now here's an interesting category. So Bloomberg Maps will actually show you uh, substations uh, and even show you transmission lines. Um, so for instance, let's zoom in here in West Virginia. Uh, we'll take a look at some transmission lines. And if we even want, we can throw in some substations. And these data points um, will reveal more information to you about um, both the lines and the substations themselves in terms of voltage. See, primary voltage at 46 for that particular substation owned by American Electric Power. And you can see these lines running, um, well, just about everywhere. To me, that's very exciting and quite amazing. Let's take a look at uh, power plants. Actually, let's do power plants and transmission lines. Isn't that incredible? And this will provide us some, with some uh, generator details. So let's see if we can pull up a nuclear plant. Arkansas Nuclear, nuclear One with a 942 megawatt generator, or reactor, I guess you could say, owned by Energy. Entergy. Okay, let's get rid of that. And uh, let's took a, take a look at mines here. Uh, so we've got all active mines set. And again, I'm gonna show you what, uh, what they're mining for. So nickel, gold, iron ore, etc. I'd like to go over to uh, Africa and see what um, kind of data points are provided there. And I apologize for the fact that the um, maps are loading very slowly today. I don't know why. And now it's just totally black. See if we can try that again. There we go. So you can see the various maps that exist in uh, on the African continent, for example. Okay, natural gas. Again, uh, just goes to show you how granular the data is. You can take a look at NNG, LNG berths, terminals, storage terminals, underground storage, pipelines again. Uh, this time for natural gas, of course, and not crude oil. Um, and it looks, you know, sort of looks like a vein structure inside of a human body. It's just uh, amazing. Chemical processing plants. Awesome. So let's get rid of that. And uh, our next category here is vessels. Now, believe it or not, um, Bloomberg tracks um, tankers. And uh, you can see where they exist and which direction they're heading into. And of course, uh, like everything else, if you hover over the vessel, it'll provide you with some information. Uh, so this one's called S. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, uh, owned by a Pleiades shipping agents. So if you're um, working in commodities or if you're a logistics person, you can follow uh, certain tankers here, which is absolutely incredible. And you can, of course, narrow it down, down by um, vessel, destination, and so forth. Now let's take a look at infrastructure. So uh, for this one, you have uh, basics, uh, airports, military bases, dams, colleges, data centers, and railroads. Let's take a look at railroads in the United States. And I'll pretty much draw, uh, draw it on the map for you. 
Now let's see if we have data available uh, in other parts of the world, and we do. Obviously Europe known for its rail infrastructure, and it's all mapped out here. Now let's take a look at dams. I guess while we're here in Europe we can take a look at dams and see if it, it'll display anything. The data in Europe is not um, not terrific. But uh, plenty of information here in the United States. And uh, this will show us <coughs> even dam size, depending on the shade of pink here. Show you a few more layers here military bases. Uh, this is kind of interesting kind of maps out different ranges so you have the Nellis Air Force range here of course with the uh, infamous uh, Area 51 and all the other military areas that exist there. Major airports of course you can hover over them to get some more info and uh, let's drop this layer here and go to the next one which is fires and this is kind of relevant because there's a lot of fires burning here in the United States at least and um, uh, this will show you uh, different categories over the past 48 hours. So, if we head over to the west uh, coast, uh, you can see, for instance, if I zoom in here, you can see some fire data points which are still rendering because this is um, slow as molasses today for some reason. Uh, you can hover over these data points, it'll give you a timestamp and uh, fire type detected via satellite within a one kilometer by one kilometer area around this point at 940 universal coordinated time or universal time coordinated UTC on uh, the 11th of October, so that was yesterday. And we can of course um, set it by intensity. Okay, next let's take a look at uh, earthquakes. I'm not sure if there have been any earthquakes lately or any major ones. Apparently there was an earthquake here on the 30th of September of a magnitude of 4.93 at a depth of 11.54 kilometers. So that's so that's the kind of data that you get in Bloomberg. Um, and it even maps out for you the tectonic plates it looks like. This, is, this would be the San Andreas Fault for those of you not uh, not from the United States. So uh, let's get rid of that layer and see if we can plow through the rest of these in the next few moments. Uh, weather. So we'll bring that up here. And you can see average temperatures today across the world. See, relatively cold in uh, Tajikistan today. as is the case, of course, in the uh, Northern Territories. I even show you the temperature range in Fahrenheit and uh, centigrade. And let's see what other data points we have. Oh boy, a whole bunch here. Uh, certainly not going to go through all of it, but uh, let's take a look at cloud cover. Isn't that incredible? Rainfall measured in inches. Uh, even stuff like soil moisture. And let's just take a look at, uh, I guess we'll say, wind speed. So you can see it, it gathers all of the uh, weather reports and I'm sure it uses sort of like meter reports for um, that are used for aviation uh, weather readings at uh, airports and uh, other um, weather stations and 
sort of aggregates all of it and throws it on the map here for you. So that's definitely pretty cool. And another relevant category, cyclones. Uh, in the United States, we call them hurricanes. But uh, the rest of the world does call them cyclones. And uh, typically, it maps out um, those cyclones. I don't see any mapped out now. I, I do know that it, that Hurricane Delta did make landfall. Um, not sure if it's going to render any more. Let's see. But I did come to this function last week because I was um, interested in, you know, looking at the path that uh, Hurricane Delta was going to take, and uh, it did it did render that. It did show that on screen. So. And again, I apologize because this is really taking a while today. Uh, let me just try and reload that in there and see if it does anything. Oh, it does. Okay. So uh, this must be Delta here. It is. And you can even see that it will show you the projected path of the uh, storm system. And of course, the uh, previous path with the wind history, or the wind field history. So this is, it, it's, it's little things like this that make this platform just absolutely incredible. It sort of makes you the smartest guy in the office, you know, because you have so much data available to you. Um, not to say that this data is not available elsewhere on the internet, because it is absolutely, but as I've as I've mentioned in my first video, it's sort of all aggregated and put in this one package. It's like you have all this information in a box and you can just reach in and grab it whenever you need it without having to search all over the place for it. So we have a um, couple of more categories that we can look at. Uh, let's take a look at drought. I'll show you the drought here and I, I do apologize to my international friends for focusing uh, on the United States here. I should take this across the world and we can take a look at those data points. So you can see obviously bright yellow indicates uh, areas of dryness and of course the blue areas indicate areas of relative wetness. And uh, of course it looks like full, full world data is available here. And finally, we have one more category to get through, and that is climate. So here we're looking at uh, the, the cyclone risk factor. So you can see areas that are susceptible to cyclones, of course, uh, in Eastern Asia, um, big cyclone area. Of course, if we come down to the Gulf, you'll see um, areas that are affected as well with uh, wind speeds in kilometers per hour and miles per hour for that record there. Uh, wind speeds here. Uh, interesting. Let's uh, see what else we have. Diseased reef samples. Let's go to Australia. See what's there. See what kind of data points this shows us. Uh, it even lists the type of disease. Uh, white syndrome. Uh, I can't say I know very much about uh, reef diseases, but there you have it. Bleached reef samples, I'm going to be honest with you and say I'm not sure what that means exactly, but that data is there. And uh, we have uh, excessive heat risk over a 20-year period, looks like. And uh, there you have it. Cyclone storm surge risk 50 years. So basically the southern and eastern coast of the United States. Doesn't look like there's much cyclone water risk or, or um, storm surge risk in Europe. But of course in Asia that is very much a thing. Cyclone risk itself, I think we that's where we started. And then water risk. And this measures a scarcity of water in, diff in various parts of the world according to the legend here. See, water is fairly scarce in India, at least according to this data.
or maybe not. This is water scarcity from low to high. Wait for it to fill in the rest of the data there. And uh, that's what it's been doing today. It's sort of been loading in half the data and not doing the rest. I don't know if Bloomberg's having issues with uh, the platform. There we go. Okay, so I think that um, that about wraps it up. I think I've gone on far too long and I've probably bored you to tears. Uh, but I I do think it was worth recording this because Maps is an incredible um, function in, um, in Bloomberg and um, again you can combine different data points so if I'll go back to Maps to the Geo Insights page you can see what kind of um, what kind of maps you can show so let's pick an interesting one uh, we'll come back to the China Silk Road I guess this one displays um, pipelines and ports and rails and so forth. So we'll leave it there. I appreciate you checking out the video. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring. Uh, let me know what other things you'd like to see in the Bloomberg terminal in the uh, comments, and I, I will work on getting it done. I appreciate your time, and um, hope you have a great day.